Hi everyone, Adron here, welcome to Wild Bush and Great, and welcome to my mess. Alright, so today's video, I want to go over some shot shell fundamentals, more specifically, substitution of was and hull, and we can quickly also talk about primers. And the most common problem everyone reloading shot shell will eventually fall into is opening their manuals. Hopefully, everyone is working with at least one good manual. Looking for a load data, finding recipe, and you end up, you either don't have the same primer listed in the recipe, or you don't have the WAD, or you don't have the, 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 the hull type. What do you do? When is it okay to substitute for a different things when it is not okay? So let's start with primers. This one's gonna be short and sweet. I don't substitute primers, okay? That's simple. The reason for that is pressure. Semi-pressure for 12 gauge shotgun, for example, is 11,500 PSI, whether it's three inch or two and three quarter inches. Now, why, pri why I don't substitute primers? The answer is, is in this book here, okay? And if I go over quickly, so you'll see at looking at this graph here that looking at the same, sorry, at the same charge in powder, the same load, the same weight in shots, but just using different primers, you have a very wide range of pressure. So from 9,000 PSI using CCI 209, all the way up to 12,400 12, PSI using Federal 209. So that means that if you're seeing a load that had, for example, a pressure PSI of 10,000, and you were to change primer type that you're using, you could have a jump of almost 3,500 PSI. That will put you way, way above the 11,500 11, PSI that Sam is calling for, okay? So that's, to me, that's my hard rule. I will not substitute primer, period. Now, what can you substitute though? Good question. When we come to WAD and hull type substitution, we have to understand how they're actually made, all right? And you also need to understand what you're trying to load. WAD, you have specific WAD for steel, and you have specific WADs for lead, okay? When I say steel, it's include uh, bismuth and uh, heavy shots. You cannot go from one WAD to the other, or the other to one. That's one, uh, one thing. So when you're using steel, you use steel. You could use lead in steel wad for sure, but do not use steel shots in uh, lead hulls, okay? This doesn't work, they're too thin. The steel wads are made of a super tough plastic that will protect your barrel as the shots are flying down the barrel, right? It's gonna protect your barrel. Plus, when you're loading, your steel, usually you'll try to have your steel shot inside the cup of the wad. Uh, whereas in type of lead, you could actually have a good column of leads going above the wad, okay? This technically shouldn't affect much your group or your range or your performance. So here my rule is don't substitute lead wads with steel wads or steel wads with lead wads. All right. So before we start substituting wads, we need to understand how hulls are made first, okay? Here I have two types of, uh, of wads. Those are the most common type that you will find. Uh, and you have one straight wall and one tapered wall. See how it's one material that creates the base of the wad and the hull? And see how thicker and thicker and thicker the walls of the huds are getting toward the base. So this is what we call a tapered hull, all right? In contrast, look at the other one here. This is a federal plastic case. And look at how straight the hull is. And there is a second material creating the base. Okay, this is a plastic base wall. So that's what we call a straight wall hull. Now, why is this important? This is important because wads have different sizes. Okay, and some wads are made to work better with some of, with one type of another type of hull. And as if the difference between these two wasn't enough, knows that some hull may have thicker walls, some other may have thinner walls. 
So this is why you need to change the size of the wad that will come here. This is important because you want a good seal between the base and the wad. Okay? When you're putting your powder and you're compressing the wad, you want a good seal here. So when the powder ignites, there's the, the, the buildup of pressure is just right. Not too low, not too high. What you do not want is a wad that is too thin, okay, too narrow, and gas will pass back, that the gas during ignition will pass to the side of the wad. The also other problem that might arise if you're using a wall that is too, a wad that is too small, is that the power will migrate out, you know, outside of the cup. And this is bad because you will not have the charge necessary here for proper ignition. And that will lead to, you know, inaccuracy, uh, diminished velocities, and, and, you know, you're coming for all sort of problem here. The other issue that we might run into when you're substituting WAD, and in the same document, let me show you another example. WAD substitution is also a problem, but not as much as a primer substitution. Here you see that the range between various WADs is actually 1,500 psi, which is manageable. Okay, mm -hmm. if you were to use, if you were to use a load that has a low pressure, you know, around an eight, nine thousand, I wouldn't mind much. I wouldn't mind much interchanging WADs and testing various loads, uh, knowing that you know. But if if a load is already on the cusp of being very high. I will not interchange the wads at this point. I will, you know, try to find the, the correct wad or find a different uh, recipe for that. So the other thing I would definitely be looking into is actually how much um, weight you can keep in the cup of a specific wad. This would also indicate whether you have a good substitute or not. That being said, I forgot to mention, I should have mentioned that from the get-go, some manufacturer will actually create wads that are meant to be a replacement for some other wads. Okay, let me show you an example here. Here, so here I have a Klebuster CB1138-12, which is made to be a replacement for the WWE12R, okay? And normally with this wad, you can use any load data using this wad when WWR is being listed in the, uh, the manuals. But it's not always the case, right? So sometimes you have to kind of guess which wad you can use. The way I would do it is first uh, finding if I have a good fit in the shell that I'm going to use, right? So I'm gonna insert it and try to see if, you know, if it's too loose, for example, because if it's too loose, it means I don't have a proper seal. One test that you can do is to drop you power charge, put down the wad inside, tamp it down, flip it, and see if you have powder falling. If you have powder falling all over the place, it means you don't you do not have a good seal at the base of the wad. So that's uh, that's it. The second thing is I will compare the height, okay, of the wad. Those are the same. If a wad is too tall, it means probably in the shot column you will not have a good crimp uh, with the uh, the load that you're going for. Maybe you have to reduce the weight shot, but if you reduce the weight shot, it means you need to change the recipe because you're just, you know, the, the, the powder charge is meant to a specific weight charge. So you will not have the same uh, performance, uh, so to speak. Not saying it's going to blow up in your face, that's not what I'm saying, but you will get maybe undesirable result if you're changing things too much. So for example, if I were to make a wad substitution, I will insert this wad here, and here, just just by the pressure, you can you can hear that I have a good seal. The base of the wad is, has a good seal and contact with the, uh, the 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 walls of the hull, and you can hear that that suction cup. It means the seal is good. If I were to use I don't know this one for example, super loose, nothing. Okay, not so much. So maybe this wad is not appropriate for this type of holes. Uh, do I have another one? Let's try the W. Nope. 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 
Nope. So you see, none of these wads are actually good for the shell except the one that I just tested. This one. Also, one thing that I will do from time to time is actually open a factory load, extract the, the shots, the powder, and look at the wad that they have inside so I can find the correct replacement, right? So here I had this one from this shell and I find that the proper replacement I even have and when comparing the wad side by side I even know what range I should be trimming my wads to get the perfect trim. Cool, so I hope that helps you a little bit in you know deciding how you're, you're gonna go about this. Um, why I'm making this video, I'm actually, I was working on a different video where I'm coming up with my turkey loads and one of you folks challenged me to come up with the best load and make a video about it and this is what I was going for. And when I was looking at the reality manual, I did not have the wad that I wanted to do and I was like, hey, you know what? I'm having this problem often. I'm sure other people also have this type of issues. So here, here it is. That's how I approach it. And again, this is reloading, folks. Safety is a priority. Whatever you do, use common sense. Uh, don't just follow blindly what I'm saying here. If you have any doubt, stick to what the manual is telling you, please. So don't go out doing some funny stuff to earn a Darwin Award, would ya? So about the turkey loads, uh, when the video is going to be released, I'm gonna pop up a link here on the uh, on the top corner. One thing I can, should I? No, I'll leave that for the next video. All right, that's it folks, see ya, bye bye.